Welcome back, Seth Bling here. This video is going to be all about command blocks, and I want to show you basically every facet of command block that I can. Uh, it's going to be split up into three sections. I'm going to talk about selectors, like at P, at A, at R. I'm, just, I'm going to go over all of the commands and all the different ways you can use them. And I'm going to go over specifiers, which lets you select, for instance, uh, only people of a certain level within a certain range of a command block. Etc. All right. So the first thing you need to know about command blocks is how to get one. Uh, you have to be in creative mode, and you have to be an operator on your server in order to use command blocks, or just in single player with cheats enabled. Uh, you use git slash give your username 137. 137 is the block ID for command blocks, and that'll give you a command block. Uh, you can place it on the ground. A command block. When you right click on it, will have a uh, a spot for a console command. Uh, so you could use slash give Seth Bling 137 and then if I put a button next to it, basically whenever it gets triggered by uh, any redstone power, it's going to execute the command. It could be triggered with a, a line like this. Um, it could even be triggered via the block next to it. So you power the power of the block next to the command block, it'll still do it. Okay, but there's there's uh, there's something better to do than just type a name because if someone like Etho comes along and presses this button, it's not going to do anything for him. It'll give me a block, a command block. That's it. So you can see beneath the uh, beneath the line here, it says use at P to target the nearest player, use at R to target random player, use at A to target all players. So if I use give slash give at P, uh, one thirty seven, then it's going to find the nearest player to the command block, which is still going to be me, and it'll give it to me. Um, similarly, at R, we'll find a random player anywhere on the server and give them the command block. Since I'm the only player on, it's single player, uh, it's going to give it to me. At A is also going to give me a command block. This will find, this will give it to everyone on the server. And it basically execute this, executes the same command for each player on the server. So, there we go. Uh, gives, it would give everyone, even if Etho came in along and pressed the button, it would give Etho a command block and it would give me a command block. Just an example. Okay, so that's that's all I'm going to say about selectors for now, but when I get when I get to specifiers later, we're going to refine how we use selectors. But for now, I just want to go over all of the commands that you can use with the command block and kind of explain how you might use them. So we've already seen give. Uh, you, can give you can do a little bit more with give. So say I said give at p 137 2, uh, and I push the button. You'll see I have seven command blocks in my inventory. I push the button. Now I have nine. So the second number here tells you how many uh, how many items to give. And in fact, you, if you want to figure that out for yourself, use slash help give, and that'll tell you the usage. It says usage slash give player item amount data. Now there's you'll notice around player there's angle brackets. And then around item, there's angle brackets. But around amount and data, there's normal brackets. And when you see those normal square brackets, it means that those are optional arguments. You don't have to give those. So for instance, you can use give without an amount or without data, and it'll still work. Uh, you, do, you should note that if you want to use data, you have to use amount. And, uh, and if you want to see a list of the commands, you can use slash help, uh, slash help, uh, we'll, we'll show you the first page of the help uh, list, the list of commands. Help slash help two will give you the second page, slash help three, third page, slash help four gives you the fourth page, which only has one command on it right now. And so, okay, so where were we? So slash help, whoops, sl slash help give. So it was um, item amount data. So 137 is the item, uh, two is the amount. I don't have a data here. Let's let's make use of that data though. So wool is block 35. So if I just say give at p 35, it'll give me one white wool. If I say give at p 35 10, it'll give me 10 white wool. If I say give at p 10 30 or sorry 35 10 1, it'll give me 10 orange wool. And you can tell that because here orange wool has a block ID of 35 and a data value of 1. The different colors of wool are different, uh, so different data values. So if I want lime wool, 
let me get rid of this white wool, I would use uh, a data value of five. Give myself 10 lime wool. You can use this uh, for splash potions. So if I look at all the splash potions, you can see they have um, they have a data, or sorry, a, an ID of 373, and the data value varies, but it's they can they can go from 16,000 to 32,000 something. And by doing this, you can actually give entire stacks of splash potions. So very useful to be able to give stacks of splash potions. So this will support any count up to 64. Uh, to go along with slash give, there's also slash clear. If you just use slash clear on a player like this, it will just clear out their entire inventory. Um, for now, I just want to clear out all of the lime wool. So I'm going to clear out block ID 35, data, data value 5. You can't specify an amount for clear. It always clears out all of them. So here I'll clear out the lime wool for my inventory. If I just said 35 and without specifying a data value, 35 is the block ID for wool. You'll notice it gets rid of both the white wool and orange wool. Um, yeah, that's that's basically all there is to that. Uh, yeah, like I said, you, you can't clear out a specific amount of, you can't like clear out one wool, you have to clear out all of it or, or all of the lime wool or whatever. Um, okay, so let's see. Uh, you can use slash difficulty. Um, and difficulty changes the difficulty level. Difficulty zero would be peaceful. One is easy, two is medium, three is hard. So if I spawn a creeper, let's grab a creeper egg. Here's a creeper. I could change this to difficulty zero. And then let me put a repeater and another command block down. And I'll, this one will be slash difficulty three. Um, so this one will change it to, to peaceful, which will get rid of the creeper, and then this one will change it back to hard. So you can use this to make all of the hostile mobs disappear, and then set the difficulty back, level back up. Very useful. Uh, you, so basically you butcher all the mobs. Okay, um, you can use game mode. So you could say like game mode zero at P. So there's three different game modes. There's, uh, there's survival, which is zero, uh, creative, which is also one, and adventure, which is also two. So if you said game mode zero at P or game mode survival at P, uh, it'll change my game mode to survival. And so you can see now I have the hearts to go back in the console to give myself that. Yeah, so, so this would be equivalent to that. Also changed me to survival. And you can read about the game modes on Minecraft Wiki if you don't know about those. Um, but that's that's useful for changing people to adventure mode when they join the game or creative mode when you want them to be able to fly around after the game or something uh, if you're making a game if they, you know there's other uses uh, okay so let's do game rule next I'm just gonna use my console for this uh, so if you type slash game rule without giving any arguments it'll give you a list of all the different game rules there's command block output do fire tick do mob loot do mob spawning, do tile drops, keep inventory, and mob griefing. And I use all of these. They're all really useful. Uh, command block outputs will, on a multiplayer server, will uh, enable or disable the output of command blocks. So it doesn't really do anything in single player, I think. But uh, normally in multiplayer, when you run a command from a command block, it will display it to all of the ops on the server. But you can disable that by using game rule. So you do game rule, command block output false. And I do this with all of my games uh, so that you don't have this command block spam to all the ops on the server. And uh, the opposite of that would be game rule command block output true. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's not going to show... Um, oh, maybe. No, I don't think that... Uh, anyway, yeah. So that's command block output. Uh, do fire tick says whether or not fire is going to spread or go out on its own. It's basically fire just stays still. It becomes kind of a static um, entity, static block, whatever. Uh, won't spread or, or go out. Uh, do mob loot means if, if do mob loot is true, then mobs drop their loot like normal. If it's false, then they don't drop anything. Uh, do mob spawning means uh, if it's 
uh, if it's true, then mobs spawn like normal. But if do mob spawning is false, then uh, the mobs aren't going to spawn naturally. Although they can still spawn from mob spawners or uh, you know spawn eggs or dispensers with spawn eggs or whatever. Um, do tile drops means that if you're in survival mode and you you know use a pickaxe on like a sandstone or whatever, it's not going to drop a block if that's if that's uh, disabled if that's turned to false. Keep inventory means you keep all of your inventory when you die, um, and uh, you also keep your experience and you keep whatever you're wearing that stays in the wearing slots and everything. So if I set my spawn point right here, which I'll get to later, I kill myself, um, I'll spawn right back here with all my gear. So, and then I think there was one more game rule. Yeah, mob griefing means uh, stuff like if a creeper blows up, and I'm pretty sure this is it. Well, let me, game rule, mob griefing, false. Okay, if this creeper blows up, no damage to the world. And so stuff like um, gas fireballs doesn't damage the world, and uh, the wither won't break any blocks, stuff like that. So game rule is pretty useful, and you can use 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 that with command blocks if you so choose. Uh, there's slash say, so this is a really basic one that's useful for communicating the state of games or adventure maps or whatever to the player. So I could do slash say hi, and it'll say hi. So when you see that at between the brackets, um, that's like the command block's name is at sort of. And I think this might be changing very soon, um, but uh, so that if you use if you rename a command block before you place it, then that the name will show up. I saw Dinnerbone tweeted something about that, but I'm not sure. Uh, so you can also use like at high at p, and it'll replace at p with the nearest player. So the command block says hi Seth Bling. Uh, you could do it with at a, and it'll list off everybody in the server. If there's like two people, it'll say hi Seth Bling and Ethos. It'll even insert the and and commas. It actually formats it very nicely. Um, so say is is quite useful uh, to go along with say. There's also tell. So uh, you can say or you can uh, slash tell at p hello, and so the command block will whisper to me hello. Uh, you can do this with like tell at a hello and then the command block will whisper to all the players on the server um, which is a lot like say although later we'll be able to filter it out with the um, specifiers so that the so that you can like say you can tell a message to you know maybe people with a certain level number or whatever uh, there's so there's spawn point which I showed you. So spawn point, if you if you type spawn point in the console yourself, it'll just set your spawn point. Um, but in in the command block, it needs a target. So you can say spawn point at p, and it'll set the spawn point of the nearest player. Now by default, it just sets their spawn point to their current position. So twenty nine sixty four forty seven. That is my current position. If you look in F three. Um, you can set it to specific coordinates if you want. So 30, 64, 30. Set the spawn point. Uh, and then if I use slash kill to kill myself, uh, that's where I'll respawn. You can see I'm 30, 64, 30. Get back over here. Um, so that's really useful for setting someone's spawn point to a particular location. For inst instance, you could set their spawn point on top of a pressure plate uh, and then when they spawn, they will be uh, they'll spawn on that pressure plate. So there's something you need to be careful about though, um, because if you set if you spawn um, basically if you set someone's spawn point right here by coordinates 26, 64, 46, they wouldn't actually be able to spawn there because this pressure plate already occupies that space, and the game will not let you spawn somewhere where there's already a block. So just really really yeah, be really careful. If you want to spawn them above a pressure plate, just make sure they're one block above it. So spawn them like uh, next to this block, kind of like where where this um, sandstone block is, so that they'll fall onto the pressure plate rather than spawning in the pressure plate, which doesn't work. Uh, okay, so the next one is test four, and this isn't really going to be useful until we get to the uh, specifiers. I'm actually going to skip it until we get to the specifiers. Uh, you can use time. Time set a thousand. Uh, this is really useful. I have in this world, I have a, a minecart on loop that just runs that command. Time set a thousand. 
and you might see that every once in a while if I look through my history. I don't know. Uh, so you can set the time and uh, and make sure it's never night, or you can also do time um, time add. Uh, 12,000, yeah, every thousand is one in-game hour, so 24,000 uh, units is one day, 12,000 12, is half a day, so you can s kind of swap back and forth between night and day by adding 12,000, stuff like that. Uh, if you want to speed up time, you could have like a clock that so would say like time at 100, and then, you know, as you're, uh, I can't really get the... Yeah, as you press it, it'll kind of skip the skip the sun forward a, a little bit at a time. But yeah, kind of simple command. You can figure out how you want to do it. Uh, TP is really useful. Uh, so you could use, use like TP at P 30, 64, 30. It'll find the nearest player and teleport them to 30, 64, 30. You can also teleport players to each other. So you could say... Uh, TP at R at R and that'll find two random players it'll teleport one of them to the other uh, or you could do TP at A at P and that'll teleport everybody on the server to the nearest player to the command block so and when we get to specifiers it becomes even more useful because you can teleport uh, everybody you know who's farther away than a certain distance from the command block uh, to a certain set of coordinates or something like that becomes yeah again quite useful uh, there's weather so this is pretty straightforward actually just look at the weather command it's help weather uh, oh never mind that doesn't really help <laughs> so there's weather clear uh, there's weather rain I think there's weather thunder uh, but yeah so you can use um, you can, you, you can also set the amount of time, the number of seconds for which you want it to stay that way. So if you say weather clear and then a million, and a million is the maximum value that it'll accept, then the weather will stay clear for a million seconds, which is a long time. It's like a few days. So um, I always, whenever I start up a new, a new world, I always run that very early. Just make sure it doesn't rain on me ever, because <laughs> I find rain kind of annoying. Uh, so yeah, you can use that with command blocks if you want. I don't actually usually use it with command blocks. I usually just type it in myself. Uh, there's XP, and this is going to lead us perfectly into specifiers. So you can um, you can say XP 10 at P. It'll give 10 experience to the nearest player. Uh, and that's just 10 experience, so uh, it's not... It takes more and more experience per level as I go, so you'll notice not every not every time I push the button am I gaining a level. Uh, you can also take away experience, so XP minus ten, and you'll notice my levels start to. Oh, maybe you can't. Huh. Okay, I'm wrong. <laughs> uh, but you can do negative level anyway. So let me just show you. Uh, so you could say XP three L at P. So if you use a uh, three and then a capital L. Don't know if it has to be capital actually. I'll, I'll go from level seven to ten, level ten to thirteen, thirteen to sixteen, etc. And you can use negative numbers here, so I can take away levels this way too. Uh, it won't ever take you below zero. So if you want to just take away some, all of somebody's levels, XP minus one hundred, I go back to level zero. Uh, this becomes really really useful when you want to use it with filtering. So let me t let me talk about filtering. Um, I'm going to say hi at P. So it's going to find the nearest player. And so it says hi Sethling. Now I'm going to use a specifier on this at P. So anytime you use an at, you can use specifiers. I'm going to say hi at P. And then in brackets, I'm going to put R equals three. What this means is it'll only look for the nearest player within three blocks of the command block. So I'm within three blocks of the command block right now. It'll still find me, but if I'm outside of three blocks, it won't even look for me. And since I'm not within three blocks, I couldn't find a player. It just doesn't say anything. So it doesn't say anything there. Um, so R is maximum radius, basically. Um, you can also do RM, which is minimum radius. So in this case, it's only going to look for me if I'm at least three blocks away. So if I'm this close, it's not going to find me. It won't say anything. If 
If I'm farther away though, it'll find me and it'll say hi Seth Bling. I'm a little bit farther away than three blocks. Uh, you can do similar things with levels. So you can do um, uh, L and LM basically. So L equals uh, five, LM equals three. So what this means is the minimum level of three and a maximum level of five. So it'll only look for players within, um, uh, you know, between levels three and five. And it's gonna, if there's multiple players in that range, it'll, ch it'll choose the nearest player because that's what that at P does. And so right now it's not gonna say hi to me. If I give myself two levels, it's still not gonna be, it's not gonna say hi to me because I'm not between three and five. If I do that again, I'm level four and it will say hi to me uh, because I'm between levels three and five. Uh, notice that it is, it, it'll give, even if you're exactly on one of the boundaries there, it'll still say hi to you. Uh, if, if I was level three, let's see, XP minus two L, it'll still say hi to me. Um, but if I, uh, if I'm level six, it's not going to say hi to me. Um, and I can even combine this with a radius. So R equals three. Uh, I can keep adding these specifiers. So right now it's not going to say anything because I am, um, I'm level six. I'm not, you know, lower than level five. Uh, if I give myself nice levels, now it'll say hi to me because I'm in within radius three and between the experience, or sorry, between the level range values. If I go outside of that radius, it's not going to say hi to me. So just keeps, you can keep restricting the search space, basically, Re restricting the search for players. Um, notice that all of this works for at A and at R as well. So, okay, so far we've gone over R, RM, L, and LM. Uh, there's a couple more. There's M, which is game mode. So if you say uh, hi to everyone who's level who is game mode one, which is creative mode, uh, it's gonna say hi Seth playing. If I set my game mode to survival, it's not gonna say hi to me. And this is also really useful. For instance, you can teleport um, everybody who's in survival mode somewhere, uh, or you could have I don't know. You could you can figure out how you want to do it, but um, very useful to be able to filter players by by mode. So uh, let's see. That's M. There's uh, C, which is count, and so you can say C equals three, and it'll only pick three players. I'm not sure how it orders it. I'm not sure there's a defined order to uh, to this if you use at A, but if you said like at R C equals three, it would pick three random players from within the server. And if you said at P, sorry, at P C, whoops, C equals three, then it's gonna pick the three nearest players. So it just kind of makes sense. I don't remember how at A does it. I think it might just be random, uh, or not random, but kind of unspecified. Uh, so that's that's C, and then there's X, Y, and Z. So you could say uh, th these don't actually filter anything. So if you say X equals thirty, uh, actually let me let me look at my current coordinates. Where am I? Okay, so right here. Let me let me make a hole. Oh, I'm in. Oops. So I'm gonna make a hole in the ground. Um, I'm at twenty-two sixty-four fifty. X equals 22, Y equals 64, Z equals 50. So this is basically going to set the coordinates for where the command block is testing. So if I just did this, um, that doesn't actually change how it filters anything. It's still gonna it's still gonna say hi to everyone. Uh, but if I set a radius as well, it's going to check the radius from that location over there. So I'm not within three blocks of of those coordinates and so it's not going to say hi to me now if I go within three blocks I'm now within three blocks of right here it will say hi to me so you can you can have the command block check an area that's kind of remote and that is also very very useful um, you could also say you know RM so farther away than three blocks from 
uh, from from this position. So now it's not going to say hi to me because I'm within three blocks of this position, but right here it will say hi to me. So yeah, the the coordinates here only matter for R and RM. Now there's a shortcut. Uh, if you don't want to type out x equals y equals z equals r equals, you can say 22, 64, uh, what was the other one? 33? I don't remember. Oh, no, it was 50. Z was 50. So if you don't give any any like letters equals like this, it's just going to assume the first argument is x, the second argument is y, and the third argument is z. And then the fourth argument will always be r. So if you don't say anything equals, that's what's, that's what's going to happen. So this is equivalent to saying at a uh, 20 x x equals 22, y equals 64, z equals 50, r equals 3. These two things are equivalent, this one and this one. Uh, I, I use this, the shortened version quite often because it's just much, much easier. And uh, I, I don't know, I, I'd recommend you do too. So yeah, just to show you, it'll say, it won't say anything to me because I'm not within three blocks and now, now here it will. All right, there's one more feature about command blocks that, uh, that I want to show. And this is a new feature in the snapshot. And I'm going to come back to that test for command. So there's this comparator. And the comparator kind of deals with analog signals or signals of signal strength less than 15. So we can see right now it's outputting a signal strength of 1. And that's because the last time I ran the command, uh, this at a thing found one player. So basically what what happens with the comparator is whenever a command block ex executes a command, it counts up the number of players that it found in uh, parameters like this, and and that's the signal strength that it outputs. So I'm not in multiplayer, so I can only show you 0 and 1, but here it did, found 0, and you can see that because it didn't say anything. But if I come back over here and press it, you can see the uh, the comparator turns back on. So you can kind of detect the number of players that are maybe in a certain region within a certain radius of a point, or uh, or whatever. So basically, if you want to do that without using say, you can use test for. That's basically what test for is for. So you could say test for everyone who is between levels three and five. And then every time you, you know, provide power to the command block, this redstone will out, output will update with the number of players that are between levels three and five. And, you know, you can have more, more, uh, more things in there, more specifiers. But that's basically how it works. Very useful for if you want to test the number of players or <clears throat> working as a proximity detector that actually triggers redstone. There's no other way really to trigger redstone with a command like this, uh, except maybe teleporting the player onto a pressure plate or something like that, but, uh, but that's gonna move a player around. So this actually doesn't have any other side effects than just the, the redstone thing. Whew. All right, I think that's about it. <laughs> Hopefully I didn't miss any major features of the command block. I uh, hope you enjoyed, and thanks for watching.